Hello, in this video, we're going to go over how to create a dynamic IK animation system. So we can make it so when the player character is playing a certain animation, they're going to move their hand to wherever my red ball is. So if my red ball is in the center, my player character will move their hand to the center. If I move this red ball slightly higher, when my player character plays this animation, they're going to move their hand slightly higher, and so on. So this can be helpful if you want your character's bones to move to specific locations during animations. So maybe you want to set this up with an interaction system, or maybe you'll make it so your player character's bones go to a specific location when they're holding an object, and so on. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set this up. And before we get started, if you'd like to learn even more about Unreal Engine, make sure to enroll in my free Unreal Engine beginner course. You can find a link to that in the description of the video. With that being said, let's get into it. To get started, we are first going to import an animation of the character pressing the button. So I'm just going to go over to my characters folder, mannequins, and over to the animations folder, and over to the unarm folder, and attached somewhere in the description of this video, there's going to be a link to an animation of a character pressing down a button. Just import this animation if you want to follow along with what I'm doing. Although this process works with any animation. So I'm just going to import this animation to my project. I'm going to scroll down and for the skeleton, select the SK mannequin because this animation is rigged to my Unreal Engine mannequin character. Next, we just want to right click on this animation and go create and create an animation montage. Then we just want to double click and open it up. Next, we are going to add a curve to our animation. So to do that, we just want to go here where it says curves and go add curve and go create curve. For the curve name, just call it press button. Then we just want to double click and head inside the curve. If you press control and zoom in and out with your mouse wheel, that will allow you to kind of zoom in and out. Next, we just want to go to the start of this animation and right click and go add key. We want to add a key at second zero with a value of zero at the start of our animation. Then I'm just going to play this around here where my player character is beginning to press the button. At this point, we're going to dynamically make it so our character's hand will move to wherever the button is. So at this point, I'm just going to select my curve, right click and go add key. And at second 1.3, I want this to have a value of one. Let me just zoom out. And then all the way to around here, I'm going to right click on my curve again, add another key. At second 3.4, I want this to have a value of one. And then let me go all the way to the end of my animation. So I'll just play it. At the end, I just want to right click on my curve, add a key, and at the last second, I want this to have a value of zero. Then to make my curve a bit smoother, I'm just going to select this first point, right click and go auto, and then select this third point, right click and select auto, and that'll just make it so our curve is smoother. So when our curve is at zero, we're just going to make it play our normal animation. Although when our curve is at a value of one, we're going to make it so our player character's hand will move to wherever we want it to. In this case, we'll make it move towards a button that we want our player character to press. Next, I'm just going to minimize this and I'm going to go over to my third person folder, over to the blueprints folder, and I'm just going to right click, go over to blueprint class, select an actor, and I'm going to call this the BP underscore button. I'm going to double click and open this up. Go over to components, go add, and I'm just going to select a sphere and I'm going to make it red. I'm also just going to click this scale button and make it 0.1 so it's a lot smaller. I will go compile and I'm just going to place this somewhere in my level. Next, I'm just going to go over to my third person character, add in some free space. I'm just going to right click and look for the one key. And when I press one, I'm going to drag off here and look for play and a montage. And I want to play the touch button montage that I just made. So the next thing we want to do is we want to make it so when the player presses the one button, they're going to move their hand to wherever my button is. To do that, we want to just open up our character's animation blueprint. 
So let me go over to mannequins, animations, unarmed, and then over to the animation blueprint unarmed. And we just want to go over to the event graph. And then we just want to add a pin here. So we're going to be adding this to the event blueprint update animation. So this will run whenever we are basically updating our character's animations. And what we want to do is we just want to right click and look for get curve value. So we want to get the value of whatever we called our curve. So just get what you called it. So I called my press button. And you want to make sure that it's spelled the same here. So I'm just going to type this in, press button. And we just want to keep track of this. So right click on this and go promote to variable. And we can just call this the curve value. We can then connect from then into here. Next, we just want to right click and look for get player character. This will allow me to reference the player character that I'm playing my game as. I'm in the third person template, so that's going to be the third person character. So I'm just going to cast to the third person character, connect from here into here. And then inside of my third person character, I want to basically get the location of where the ball is in my level. So into free space, I'm just going to right click and look for event begin play. And event begin play, I'm going to drag off here and look for get actor of class. And that is going to be the BP underscore button. I want to drag off here and look for get actor location. And then I'm going to right click here and promote this to a variable. And we can call this the target location. This is going to be the location of where we want our player character's hand to go. We can just compile this, go back to our animation blueprint unarmed. And I'm going to get the target location variable. And I'm just going to right click here and promote it to a variable called target location inside of my animation blueprint. I will then connect from here to here. And I can just comment this. Update curve value and target location. Next, we just want to go over to the animation graph. And move the output pose further here. Then we just want to right click and look for the CC dick node. And connect from here into component pose and from here into the result. And connect from the curve value into here. And from the target location into here. So whenever our curve has a value of one, it's going to make a specific bone that we can specify on our character move towards this target location. So let's set that up. We just want to select the CC dick node and scroll down, go over to solver, and we're going to go over to tip bone. This is going to be the bone that moves towards the target location. So for me, I just want to select my character's hand R bone we then want the root bone. This is going to be the bone at which it limits the movement. So it's not going to move my characters. So it's not going to move beyond the root bone. For the root bone, I just want to select my clavicle R. If we just go over to the SK mannequin skeleton, we can see those bones. So the clavicle R is this bone. And the hand R bone is this bone. So this is the bone where it will start and the clavicle bone is going to be the bone where it ends. Next, we just want to select this node and very important, we just want to go over to Effector Location Space. So we just want to change this to World Space. So it's going to move our hand R bone to where the target location is in the World Space. If this is set to Component Space, then, then it's going to do this relative to where the skeleton's bones are. So we want to change this to World Space. Then if I just go compile, save this, minimize this, and let me just place this here. I'll save everything, and then let me play my game. Let me go up to this button, and if I press 1, we can see my character's hand is going to move to where this is. If, say, I move here, and then I press 1, we can see my character's hand bone is still moving to where that button is, despite the fact that I've moved to a slightly different place. If say I go here, then I press one, the same thing. 
So that can be super helpful if you want to create dynamic animations. Also, just a note with this system, if say I turn around and then I press one, then my character's hand will kind of like go through itself. If you want to prevent that, just open up your character's animation blueprint. And for the CC dick node, just enable this, enable rotation limit and compile this. And that'll just make it so the bone can only really move within its rotation limit and range and bound. That's all for this video. If you want to learn even more about Unreal Engine's animation system, make sure to check out my Unreal Engine fundamental course. You can find a link to that in the description of the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.